Thank you, everyone. Right. Good afternoon, committee, and welcome to any new members of the public joining us this afternoon session of the Western and Southern Area Planning Committee meeting. I will now conduct uh, a roll call of committee members. Uh, Councillor Dave Bowa? Yeah, sure. yeah, good. Councillor Kelvin Clayton? Sure. Good. Councillor Susan Cockin? Sure. Thank you. Sure. Yep, point taken. I did note your comment earlier. Sure. Councillor Jean Dunseth? Good. Thank you. Councillor Nick Arland? Yeah, thank you. Councillor Paul Kimber isn't... No, no. Councillor Louis O'Leary? Okay. Councillor Bill Pike? Yeah, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Kate Weller, she's not here, I know. Councillor Sarah Williams? Councillor John Worth? Okay, thank you very much. All present and kept. <clears throat> we'll be continuing the agenda I set out on your pack, and you'll notice that there isn't an item 5E. We will go straight on to item 5F on the agenda, which is the application uh, number PFUL 2021-05299, which is Parnham Estate, Parnham, Parman, Bamminster, DT83LZ. And that's the erection of a number river lodges and realignment of the existing access track. And I now invite Emma, welcome Emma, uh, Emma uh, Telford, the case officer, to introduce this item. Over to you, Emma. Thank you. Um, yes, this application is at Parnham Estate, Parnham Bedminster, and it's for the erection of four river lodges and the realignment of the existing access track. Um, so to begin with, I've included some photos of Parnham House. Um, Parnham House is a 16th century grade two listed property and sits within Parnham Park, a grade two star listed registered park and garden. Um, Parnham House suffered severe fire damage in 2017, um, resulting in the loss of the, its roof and most of its internal floor structures and fittings, which you can see from these photographs. Um, Parnham House is included in the highest category on Historic England's um, Heritage at Risk Register. And as you can see from the, this photo, um, works have, have begun on the house. Sorry, there's a bit of delay on my screen and on that screen. Um, Parnham House is located approximately 1.6 kilometres from Bedminster. And as you can see on the aerial photograph, you've just got the edge of Bedminster up here, um, the access to Parnham House. And then the Parnham, the, this is all part of the Parnham estate. Um, the application site would be accessed from the primary entrance, which is located to the north of the site, um, down here. Um, the access closest to Bedminster, um, off the A3066. Um, and then the access would be off would be up the tree-lined avenue, um, the existing driveway, which you can see within the red line on that plan. The application site is located to the west of the walled garden. So this is the application site in here. Um, it, you've got the river brit here, um, and then this is the walled garden, and that wall's there. Um, at August committee, You'll remember that we had the six orchard rooms that were located here um, and this car park and a marquee within the walled garden. Um, the six seats, uh, car parking spaces would be provided for the lodges um, and that would be within that, that car park there. 
So this next slide shows those four river, river lodges um, with the realignment of the access track. So it's to the rear of the lodges, in between the lodges and that kitchen garden wall. Um, two types of lodges are proposed, um, and they're called type A and type B. Um, and type B is the, the two slightly larger units. Um, as part of the application, the lodges have been amended and reduced in height. So that first image is how they were originally submitted, and the second is them after they've been amended and brought down in height slightly. So they sit down um, in relation to that kitchen garden wall by approximately 1.1 meters. The lodges would be two-story with an A-shaped profile um, with a flat green roof. The west and east elevations would mostly be glazed um, and the north and south would be clad in split timber lodges, uh, logs, sorry, um, with planting also proposed between the lodges and against the cladding as well, which you can see from those elevations. Um, next up, you've got a floor pan of the Type A uh, lodge, which is the slightly smaller lodge. Um, all of the lodges will have outside decks, um, and the Type A lodge is kind of a two-bedroom lodge, with the, the second bedroom being um, slightly smaller. And next up is elevations of the Type B lodge, obviously with that um, set down element to the side. And that side element then gives you um, an additional extra bedroom and bathroom compared to the Type A lodge. The next section is just to kind of show the relationship. Um, obviously that relationship with the grade two kitchen wall, which is here. Um, and then obviously the realigned access track, which would sit between the wall and the lodge. And then obviously the relationship of the lodges with the River Brit. And then those orchard rooms that came to August committee would obviously then be on the other side of the river. So this is the application site currently, um, and it's currently used as a service area um, and primarily for parking. Uh, this is to show that uh, listed kitchen garden wall, which obviously the lodges would, sit, would be set down from. Uh, six trees and one hedge would, section would be removed. Uh, three of the trees and the hedging would be translocated and relocated within the application site once the development is completed. Um, and then three trees would be permanently lost, um, which are three apple trees. Um, but replacement apple tree planting is proposed as part of the scheme. And then this is the existing river track down here in this photograph, which would be then relocated to obviously um, to the rear of the, the proposed lodges. Um, that existing track would be taken up and replaced with topsoil and seeded. This next photograph is then from further kind of back along the driveway, um, looking back on the site. And obviously you can see the, you can kind of see um, Parnham House and it's kind of associated buildings behind the site there to the rear as well. In terms of the key planning issues, um, principle of development, Policy SUS2 allows for tourism development outside of the DDB. Um, the proposal is considered to comply with Econ 6 as an intensification of an existing holiday accommodation business. Um, and it's not considered unreasonable um, to consider that the proposal would result in income generation that would assist in the viability of the estate. Um, and the development would be tied to Parnham House. Um, in terms of residential amenity, uh, the proposed lodges are located a sufficient distance away from dwellings that are not part of the Parnham estate. Um, in terms of heritage asset, um, it's considered that no harm um, will result to the heritage assets. 
the reduction in the height of the lodges meant that they weren't considered to form a competitive element with the listed wall. Um, and the relocation of the track adjacent to the wall um, means that users will still experience that dominance of the kitchen garden wall. Um, a and B, um, the lodges would be set down from the wall and would be viewed in relation to Pinham House and all the, the associated buildings. Um, in terms of highways, there's been no objection. Um, in terms of biodiversity, a BP has been agreed. Uh, so in terms of the recommendation, it's to delegate authority um, subject to the completion of a legal agreement, and that is um, to secure the tying of the development to Parnham House. And then obviously the list of conditions is on the screen, um, but you've got the standard plans, limit, plans list and time limit, um, that the lodges would be for holiday purposes only. Um, and then there's conditions there covering materials and window and door details and other details. Um, a number of conditions around landscaping and trees um, for the development to be carried out in accordance with the flood risk assessment, for a construction environmental management plan to be submitted, and for the development to be carried out in accordance with the biodiversity plan as well. But that's everything from me. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed, Anne. Right, I now invite Ed Grant, the agent, to address the committee. Please speak directly into the microphone. You have three minutes. Over to you, Ed. Thank you, Chairman and members. Um, as you're aware, this application was due to be presented along with our Orchard Rooms, Restaurants and Car Park applications last month. So I hope you recall the details, but I'll just briefly go over some points just for general information. We're all very aware of the devastating fire that tore through Parnham, um, leaving it pretty much ruined and left the estate in a desperate state for nearly five years. A rigorous marketing campaign over 80 months resulted in Mr. and Mrs. Perkins stepping in as the only buyer with the experience and vision to take on such a project. As is so often the case with historic houses whose estates have been reduced over the years, there has to be a sensible and a sustainable business within the park in order to maintain the extremely costly overheads. After much consultation, we established that a private home with a hospitality, of, hospitality offering was the only viable solution subject to achieving the necessary quantum of accommodation. That's through the use of existing buildings and some minor new builds. This application is to erect the full river lodges discreetly positioned along the riverbed outside of the wall garden to accommodate some of the guests we are looking forward to welcoming, welcoming for milestone events such as weddings. The location is predominantly a staff car park um, and what we would like to hope that we will achieve is a passive rating on these lodges and that they end up being part of the natural habitat. The river lodges really are along with our orchard rooms the integral part of the Perkins family vision to save the house and park and, and bring Parnham back to life through the creation of this business. Our successful Jubilee event was evidence of the desire and support from our local community and district, for which we are truly thankful, and further encourage us, encourages us and the team to establish this business and, of course, maintain this incredibly special house and park. And lastly, um, critically, I think the, this accommodation will, provided, will provide um, much needed employment for the area, both through the build process, which is already in motion, um, but the resulting workforce necessary to run such a business um, will hopefully support the surrounding community and be an economical and social benefit to Dorset County. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, uh, Covers that. I now invite uh, Councillor Rebecca Knox, Ward Member for Bemminster, to virtually address the committee. Again, you have three minutes. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Chairman, and I really appreciate the ability to address the committee from um, a virtual position. That's, that's really welcome. Means I I don't have to miss a school governors meeting, which is which is is brilliant for for the school. I hope. Um, 
I Ed has said a great deal of, about the the house and the history and and the need for the um, or the desirability of of the river lodges. I would just like to add that from a community point of view, being the, the ward member, the the project, the restoration of the house is still absolutely supported by the community and indeed the more visibility the residents see of what is happening and how they feel about the Parnham restoration um, it, it gets even even more support because the employment opportunities for, for local folk are, are, are growing all the time and and obviously becoming um, more visible and, and very attractive particularly for, for younger people. I, I would also like to say I, I have visited this area and I I believe that the the river lodges are going to greatly enhance that area and become a really sort of spectacular hideaway place for those who are going to be using the facilities at, at Parnham. Being in a rural area, accommodation to be able to stay and, and visit places like Berminster is, is really needed because people do not want to travel um, long distances for events. So having overnight accommodation is, is a scarcity in the area. And and uh, one of, of this um, level of sustainable, environmentally um, uh, built lodges, I think, um, actually do provide that, that sort of natural environment which is, surrounds the area of Bemminster. Uh, the restoration of the house does need to be sustained by a business and this type of business which opens it up to members of the, the public who are using the facilities is, is a great way of uh, achieving that. I'd like to thank the officer, um, Emma, for the, the robustness of the report that she's produced for you today because there, there were some concerns raised by some of the consultees and I think that um, she's she's addressed those very well, and um, I I absolutely understood how those concerns were being addressed, and in terms of planning regulation, um, were adhered to. But but thank you, committee, and I look forward to hearing your debate. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Rebecca. Are there any questions of a technical nature for the case officer? Island Chairman. Councillor Ireland, over to you. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. Um, it's in respect to condition 16, which is the, is it 16? Sorry, I put my glasses on. I can see what I'm doing then. Um, no, sorry. It's the, the lighting one, wherever that is. I thought it was 16, but um, it is 16, yeah. Um, my question is, um, so it has to go to, to us to, for approval for a lighting scheme. Does, do, does this council ascribe to International Dark Skies Association accreditation approval, you know, that sort of thing? I, if you were aware, there's an International Dark Skies Association who approve various lighting fittings which are suitable for you know, stopping light pollution, essentially. Um, so do we ascribe to that? If we don't, can we? that back to, to Emma to reply. Uh, Chair, I think, um, I think the context of the condition is having regard to the fact that the location of the site in like a rural area and therefore we are keen to control lighting for the kind of reasons that Councillor Island is setting out um, and I think also in the interest of biodiversity as well. Um, but we don't sort of subscribe to those standards and we have to look at things on a case-by-case -case basis and um, take a view as we, to whether we feel it's commensurate and right to the, the rural location of the development and have regard to any sort of that issues. Councillor Allen, does that uh, answer your question? So I, I guess that's a no, <laughs> I think is the answer. Um, yeah, I, I guess this probably isn't the forum to actually force the council to do so, but you know, we probably should. Thank you. Are there any other questions of a technical nature, please? Apparently not, Chairman. I'm on a roll here. Um, I see no issue with this application. I think it's clearly needed to maintain the viability of this site. 
and there's also a needed uh, uh, service in that area. Therefore, I'd like to propose, if somebody will second me, accept or acceptance of this application. Thank you, Councillor Larry. Um, did I take that to be a proposal? Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't listening intently enough. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll let, um, a call on uh, Councillor Bill Park to speak next. Thank you, Chairman. Um, as, as in the last application that we heard here, I, I, I do believe that the Parliament State needs every help it can get in, in reestablishing it re-establishing itself within within the locality, particularly the, the Palm and Parham area, and I therefore am quite happy to second Councillor O'Leary's proposal. Thank you. We have a proposal and a seconder. Can I point out uh, or ask the proposal and seconder whether those proposals and seconders replies to both recommendations A and B? Thank you, that's clarified that. Okay, is there any other question, any um, comments for debate? If there's no more uh, deliberation and members are content they have heard the entire presentation of Beto, I will take a vote by a show of hands. All those in favor? Thank you. For the benefit of those tuning in from, uh, from home, the committee has voted unanimously to accept that proposal. The next item on the agenda is uh, 5G, uh, application number PRES 2021-01944, land north of Broad Windsor Road, Broad Windsor Road, Bemister. DT83PP. Now, application for approval of reserved matters of appearance, landscaping, layout, and scale of outline improved approval of WDD18000115 for 100 dwellings. Uh, before I hand over to the case officer, can I be assured that everyone's received the update sheet, which was sent out yesterday, and they've thoroughly read it? Thank you very much indeed. In that case, then, I will hand over to the, to the case officer, uh, uh, Mr. Bob Burden. Over to you. Right. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Oh, you've got your mic on. Yeah. There we go. Right. I think we're there now, Chairman. Yes, that better? Right. Right, if I can just draw members' attention to the update sheet. Um, a slight correction to paragraph 14.36 of my report. Uh, on the highway conditions, the Highway Authority actually recommended two conditions, but one of those is covered by the list on the plans list of uh, approved highways layout plans. But there is one condition I need to add to your list of conditions, which is the 15 metres section of access uh, road that's uh, indicated in the Highway Authority's conditions. So. Just bear that in mind. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, well, this is an application for reserve matters. So members are specifically fo focusing really here on layout, scale, appearance, and landscaping.
Got the just screen's just frozen at the moment, Chairman. Yeah, it's not just frozen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might just because it's uh, sometimes it does that. Right. Okay. So, uh, this application is focusing on the matters of layout, scale, appearance, and landscaping. Uh, right. To locate members, let's just uh, right. The site is on the western edge of, of Beminster. Uh, the town centre is off in this direction, off to the east here, and the. Um, site is uh, obviously on the north side of the Broad Windsor Road here. We also have uh, the uh, Buglers agricultural uh, sales premises are there. Uh, that's Lower Barrowfield Farm there. Yeah, um, I normally do it with a mouse. Um, yeah, make the laser. Do you make the laser? <laughs> when I've done it from home, I've had a mouse, so I've, I've used the, just done it off that. There you go. Lovely. Thanks, Emma. Okay, so, uh, yeah, Lower Barrowfield Farm, the listed building, Raid 2 is there. Uh, Clipper T's premises is here. All Seasons House uh, is a residential property there. And i just point out that the... Uh, Recently developed residential land, which was Clipper T's land uh, for housing, is in there and there. So obviously our site is within the, the red line as shown here. Uh, just to give you uh, an idea of the context for this aerial view, the site, as you can see at the moment, is uh, agricultural, uh, sort of pasture land, grassland, uh, with a... Uh, uh, a largely continuous boundary hedgerow, native hedgerow around the site, although it's more intermittent along the uh, site frontage. Right, this is the uh, layout plan of the site. And just to point out, we're obviously looking at the development within the red line. Uh, the, this indicative layout here is, is part of a separate reserve matters application, which is currently with the council, but is in a, a relatively uh, an earlier stage. So uh, you're focusing on what's happening or proposed to happen within this red line here rather than over there. But I'll explain the, the links with that in, in a moment. In terms of the road hierarchy into the site, from the outline would be a roundabout access, the main access road in here would feed up into the site and uh, a loop around there and secondary roads coming off together with uh, further roads, lower down the road hierarchy of those leading to, to courtyard areas. Um, this, this is part of the overall, this land plus this land over here was part of the original beam one allocation in the adopted local plan and the outline permissions for both sites were set up such that there would be a vehicular link linking the two sites and also three pedestrian links, one there, one there, and one there. So those are all enshrined in the, uh, the uh, Section 106 agreement that goes with this site. Uh, also, in the outline permission, there is provision for a pedestrian link uh, into the existing footway into the town from a point here, along here. So there'll be a new footway formed along this section here to link with a footpath just close to St. James's there. So uh, that would be a, a, a significant, obviously, the safety and convenience of pedestrians traveling back into the town, as it were. Uh, there are two public footpaths that cross the site. One runs basically pretty much on that alignment north-south on the site. And there's one which comes in and crosses the site here. Those footpaths would need to be realigned as part of appropriate applications for footpath diversions. And the route of the, the uh, one on this side would, would follow the pavement up this area here and then uh, cut across there. And the other one would, would 
come in at existing point there and follow that route around there to reach that point to uh, leave the site there. Uh, all we've done on this, this application, Chairman, is we've spent some time, uh, our landscape officer, urban designer, uh, and myself have spent some time with the applicants doing, you know, having a good go at trying to create a, a really good sense of place to this scheme, and we, th we think we've achieved that. Uh, what we have on, on the entrance to the site, you've got two curved terraces. In fact, these are blocks of flats either side, which give you a sort of uh, gateway into the site. And then en on entering the site, you have a sort of relatively wide road, tree-lined with verges, giving a nice avenue feel. And then as you come into the site, it then opens up onto the what we sort of term a little sort of village green type area, a nice open community space there. Um, so that's an important aspect to, to the heart of the scheme, if you like. In terms of landscaping, we've got a, a, a major, about 30 metre wide strategic planting buffer on the western edge of the site, because that, that's the side of the site that faces onto the open countryside effectively. So it's important to establish that, and that would be controlled within the, the 106 agreement on the outline permission. Uh, we've also got the tree-lined avenue, as I mentioned. Uh, boundary hedging would be reinforced with uh, uh, additional hedging and hedgerow trees to enhance the visual and the ecological value of, of that uh, element of the site. And you'll notice that individual trees are also scattered throughout the site, giving a little bit of soft landscaping feel to the areas uh, around the site. In terms of density, the original policy on this, the beam one, uh, look to secure a higher density towards the road frontage to Broad Windsor Road, and you'll notice a higher density apparent here, and also a higher density towards the east end of the site, the nearest end to the town, which we've achieved here. And as you come up the site, the, the land rises gently in this part of the site, and notice the density is lower to the western side and the northern side. So a nice sort of variation in... in character of uh, development on the site with a, a, a logical basis to it. Uh, majority of the development in, in terms of its form is perimeter blocks, as you can see. Um, is, there's a, a good mix of detached, semi-detached and terraced properties within the scheme, uh, varying from one bed flats right up to four bedroom detached houses. Uh, affordable housing, there are three distinct areas. One is here where you can see the sort of blue dots, blue or yellow dots. There's an area down here, affordable housing, and then there's an area around here and another area up to the north here. 35% affordable housing is included in this, in this scheme, which is policy compliant and supported by the uh, housing enabling team. Uh, public open space, I've already mentioned the green area here, which would have some trees planted on it. Um, uh, there's also the uh, a leap, locally equipped area of play down here at the eastern end of the site. Uh, a smaller lap there, local area of play there. That's deliberately placed there uh, to provide a little bit more openness space relative to the uh, listed building here on the opposite side of the, the road. But you've got a good, good sort of range of types and, and sizes of, of uh, open space. And the site also benefits from having these, by keeping the frontage hedge here, we have a nice sort of um, pathway running along the development here that runs pretty much all the way along the frontage and then comes up here. So you've got a nice sort of feel of, of little walks around this, uh, which helps to lend a bit more character to the uh, rural uh, side of things really with that walk. Surface water attenuation, just to mention that, there is a, a, an attenuation area here. Uh, there is, in fact, a large underground storage tank beneath that, so the, uh, the likelihood of that being a significant water container in, in reality, I'm assured by our flood risk team, is, is pretty low, to be honest. There's also um, uh, another uh, attenuation feature, a tank beneath the green as well. But that matter is something that's addressed on the outline conditions uh, separate to this reserve matters application.
just giving you a few site sections here. Now, this uh, top section here, this is the frontage to the Broad Windsor Road, and that gap there is effectively the, the gap there between the two sides of development, either side of the uh, access into the site. So it gives you a feel quite a strong, nice, interesting variety of, uh, of uh, designs and materials in there. It's all two-storey. The whole development is two-storey. Uh, and that is uh, regarded as quite a, uh, uh, an intimate and, and appropriate scale for, for this site. It does include some variations in height, though, as, I, as you can see at the southwestern end. We have a block of flats there, which is significantly deeper in span and consequently higher. But I think all this adds to the, the interest and roofscape interest of the development. Uh, it's based, as you can see, on, on fairly traditional vernacular designs, though we, ha we do have a nod to slightly larger, uh, grander designs, which I'll point out in, in a moment. So the, the Broad Windsor Road frontage is this area here, plus this section here, running down into the, the corner of the eastern edge of the, the site there. And this, uh, this section here just uh, is the line B there, so that's running up the slope, just to show you how the development sort of moves gently up the slope to the northern part of the site. And a further section here, CC, which is, this is then this area of the site, looking southward. So you've got a, a flat over garage there, uh, affordable housing here at the eastern end of the site, some garaging, and other detached units moving along that section there. And then section here, DD, which is the northern side of the uh, village green area, that's the uh, frontage to that space. OK, I'm just going to whiz you through a few uh, different designs just to point out a few design features. On the flats, block A at the southwest corner of the site, you see we've got features, got a number of chimneys on, on the scheme. Not all dwellings have chimneys, but quite a few do, and I think they always add and enhance a bit of visual interest and um, variety to the, the roofscape of, of schemes. And this is one of the um, blocks of flats, the curved blocks as you enter the site. Obviously, it doesn't show as curved on this drawing, but you can see that's the front and that's the back. So uh, that's, that's the, the nature of those. Nice sort of uh, use of stone on those cottage-style frontages. And incidentally, I'll just point out that the bin stores and cycle stores for these flats are in that unit at the end there. Uh, well, examples of housing. These are ground and first floor flats, those. Uh, Mid-terrace properties give you an idea of the nature of those. Nice little canopy porches, more chimneys, detailing over windows, flat over garage, little gable at features introduced to give a bit more visual interest. Again, on more detached dwellings on the frontage of the site, we have a nice uh, projecting gable feature there with uh, a recessed porch. Uh, more interest uh, with uh, stone treatment of gables and gablets here. Bay window there. Uh, all modest three-bed detached welding there and a semi-detached with gablets there. Just giving you an idea of, of the variety of design detail, including string courses and detailing over the window heads there. OK, and uh, just take you through a few photos of relevance. This is the Broad Windsor Road. That's Clipper T's premises here. And uh, the road of St James is just coming back to the right here. And there's footway you can just discern along there. So. The outline requires a footway extension to, to go from, just round that bend, round this corner, linking up with this footway to provide a safe and convenient access there. And just as this, as this slide shows, as you move down that road a little, you've got the entrance to All Seasons House there, and the footway would run from along this section there. So it'd be a realignment of the road and a creation of the footway link there. And moving further along the Broad Windsor Road, along the frontage of the site, our site is in here. So you can see the vegetation along the frontage of the site, hedging and some smaller uh, scrub and trees there. 
That's Lower Barrowfield Farm, a Grade 2 listed building. Another view of it there, just to give you a sense of that uh, significance in the street scene. And then this is having walked to the far end of the site, looking back at the site towards Peminster direction. Our site is behind the hedgerow here. And then this is uh, taken from the, the access into Bugler's agricultural premises, looking out across the road to where the main access would be. And our site is this land in here. Okay, and just standing at the back of the site, uh, at the eastern end, all Seasons House, the nearest dwelling on the site is positioned there. You can see the boundary hedgerows around the site here. And that's just panning more to the south with the Broadwinds Road is just beyond the hedge there. So this is all a size area here. And then this is from the, the northern end of the site where it, it moves further up the, the side, as it were, looking back down. Bugles premises there, Barrowfield Farm there. And then just turning a little to the southwest, this is the site here, and you can see uh, part of the uh, Wessex Ridge Way, South Wessex Ridge Way, uh, beyond uh, away to the southwest there. So main planning issues, principles established by the outline permission uh, back in uh, 2019, um, the layout, uh, I've tried to achieve a good sense of place for this. We've got the, the avenue feature, I've got the green play areas, various paths, quite an interesting variety of, of areas in terms of density and type of uh, size of housing. Affordable housing, 35 dwellings, affordable housing, affordable rent and uh, shared ownership. Uh, landscaping, obviously there's a strategic planting belt I mentioned, uh, the reinforcement of the boundary planting, specimen trees as well. Scale is, is two-storey, but with, with modest variations in actual height and depth. Uh, appearance uh, uses a traditional materials palette of uh, brick, render, and stone, together with uh, uh, tiles and, and, and slate would be the materials palette. Um, highways, uh, I've mentioned some of the main highways points. That the, uh, the application has a hierarchy of roads, and I, I pointed out you know, how those... How those, how those fit together and, and serve the, the site. Uh, green renewable energy. Now, this is a, uh, an issue that was particularly uh, focused on by the town council. And I've covered this, uh, making some comments on that, particularly at 14.26 of my report. Uh, and just to say a few more words on that, all houses will be built to the enhanced 2022 building regulation standards, as the applicant has, has confirmed, which is potentially a bit over and above what they would actually be required to do um, if they start plots before June of next year. Um, so that's uh, an interesting uh, uh, point to note. Electric vehicle charging, we can reasonably require that, and therefore I will be I am imposing a condition uh, for a scheme. Uh, and that is something that the town council were, were seeking, so I can condition that. Solar panels were also sought by the Town Council. Um, however, they're not required to make this development acceptable, and there wasn't any condition on the outline permission. So whilst the, the applicant uh, said they might be receptive to a condition on that, well, they would be receptive to a condition on that, but it would, it would need to be something that was fully justified if committee felt they could come up with a justification for that. But I, I'm not recommending that as part of my conditions. <coughs> Um, so, recommendation, approve the reserve matters with conditions, uh, usual type of conditions indicated there, Chairman. Remember that I'm also adding that highways condition on the first 15 metres to be added to the um, conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Bob. Very comprehensive report. I now invite Julian McLaughlin, speaking on behalf of Kavana Homes, to address the committee. Over to you, uh, uh, Julie. And thank you for your time. The applicant, alongside the consultant team, has been working on this reserve matters application for the last two years, with refinements and further amendments made in collaboration with council officers. In assessing the proposals, officers have considered that the reserve matters 
layout, appearance, scale, and landscaping are all acceptable, allowing for the delivery of 100 new high-quality homes to proceed. We welcome officers' acknowledgement that this is a characterful, interesting scheme which creates a sense of place, provides a range of dwelling types, and policy-compliant affordable housing. In terms of sustainability and the concerns raised by the Town Council, the scheme fully accords with local planning policy, achieving high standards of environmental performance through a number of energy efficiency measures, all of which are part of the applicant's commitment to delivering genuinely as sustainable and energy efficient homes. The committee report has noted that despite pre-registration of the scheme and therefore the requirement to meet the old building regulations, the applicant is committed to building the scheme to the new increased energy standards. In addition, the applicant is committed to providing EV charging to all homes with an adjacent parking space or garage and additional communal charging points in appropriate locations. The applicant has also provided a commitment to install solar panels and technical assessments for this element are ongoing. The proposals which deliver 100 new homes, including 35% affordable housing and appropriate and usable areas of public open space, including a village green and locally equipped area of play, reflect the objectives of the strategic site allocation and deliver a high quality, sustainable development. It is considered that the application has appropriately addressed the aspirations of the outline permission the objectives of the strategic allocation and has positively responded to officers' comments throughout, producing a sustainable scheme which accords with national and local planning policy. There are no material considerations which would warrant refusal of this application and accordingly it should be approved. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. I, I now call on... Uh, uh, um, Bob, Bob Burton, the case officer, to respond with any salient points you may wish to raise. Are there any points to be raised by highways or any relevant council officers? Is he gone? Uh, none from highways, thank you, councillor. Jim. Okay, committee, thank you very much indeed. Are there any questions of a technical nature for the case officer? Yeah, I've got a couple of questions. Um, one is the, the footpath access to the B1363. Um, so, so I guess the bottom right of that picture there. Why is it only a footpath? Why isn't it a cycle path? Um, we're building something alongside the road. It should be cycle accessible. Um, and this is going to lead on to my second question. So where that, ex where that access is, is currently around about a 30 mile an hour limit. So you'll be accessing a cycle into the 30 mile an hour limit, which is safe. And, and then if you look on Google Street View, um, which I've got in front of me on my computer, it seems that the main entrance to the development is in a 60 mile an hour zone. Um, I'm looking at a picture now and I've just gone past the T place and there's the restriction signs and buglers is ahead. So. Why are we allowing a development on a 60 mile an hour road with a, you said it, a roundabout? Um, why aren't we looking at extending as part of the development the 30 mile an hour past the entrance? There are my two questions. Thank you, Councillor Harlan. Can I hand that back to, uh, to, to uh, the case officer, please, Bob? Back to you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Yes, yeah, so on the um, question of the cycle axis on the, on the, the link through, uh, the outline permission did not require a cycle access provision as part of the, the footway link. Uh, in fact, the, the policy actually refers to a, a foot, footway link. So we couldn't reasonably have required a cycle access um, from that point there. Um, so that is the, the response on that point, Chairman. 
On the 60 mile per hour point, uh, yeah, the, the 30 mile per hour limits at the moment are, I think they're about in this sort of area here where the cursor is. But clearly with this development, the, the 30 mile per hour limit is likely to be extended uh, somewhere in, the, in this region. I, I don't know whether if uh, the highways officer is still available, whether or not he wishes to make a, a comment at all further to what I've just said. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, obviously, this was all uh, dealt with uh, prior to my involvement with this with the scheme, but uh, at the outline stage, uh, the roundabout was agreed. Obviously, at the outline stage, it does not form part of this application. But uh, my understanding is that yes, the thirty mile an hour would be extended to the west. Uh, that is beyond the um, proposed roundabout, so it wouldn't be national speed limit across the roundabout. Thank you, Guy. Does that um, answer you? Does that answer your question, uh, Nick? Yeah, um, I'm glad to see the 30 mile an hour will be extended. Um, I it didn't mention it in the report, which is why I answered, asked the question. I didn't look at the outline report. I'm disappointed about the, the footpath. It just makes no sense in this day and age to, to not make it cycle friendly. Um, we're building something alongside a road. It should be shared use. Thank you. Is there any other technical questions for the case officer, please? Right. Uh, I now uh, open the uh, debate to members. Councillor O'Leary, Chairman. Councillor O'Leary, you're first. Chairman, as this is a reserve matters application, as we discovered earlier, there's very little we can do or say or uh, point out or recommend so therefore I would like to recommend approval of this application uh, yes chair I totally echo the comments made by my colleague thank you I do beg your pardon. Five uh, H on the agenda is PFUL 2022-03702 West Bay Park, Holiday Park, 40 foot way West Bay, DT6 4HB, and that's for the development to provide 60 glamping pitches and associated parking areas. I now invite Emma again uh, to the case officer to introduce this item. Over to you, Emma. Chair, just share my presentation. Thank you. So yes, this application is at West Bay Holiday Park and it's for the provision of 16 glamping pitches and associated parking area. Um, and this application is before committee because it's on council-owned land. So the first slide is obviously showing the aerial photograph. Um, the application site is located within the existing West Bay Holiday Park, which you can see here. 
Um, it's located northwest of the West Bay Harbor, down here. Um, and it's surrounded by existing holiday accommodation on three sides, um, obviously, and then the agricultural field on the other side. Um, the nearest residential properties are on Meadway, which you can just see here. Um, and the application site is located within the A O M B. This next slide shows the existing arrangement. Um, you can see here that um, glamping pitches have previously been approved um, on the adjacent field, um, but the application site is currently used for touring pitches, which you can see here. Uh, the next slide shows the proposed arrangement um, with the 16 proposed glamping pitches, which are these ones kind of in that yellow colour. Um, with the rest of that field still being used for touring pitches. Um, this is an existing area of parking here, and then there's this proposed area of parking. Um, each glamping pitch would have one space um, in this proposed parking area, and then also three spaces provided in this existing area of parking. The Proposal makes use of existing access roads through the Holiday Park. Um, the next slide shows some examples of kind of uh, the floor plan layout. Um, so you've obviously got bedroom accommodation, kitchenette, and kind of living accommodation um, with quite a large terrace area. Um, and then these sections um, kind of show the proposed... Um, structure of the tent. Um, some example photos that were provided of, of the kind of proposed glamping tents. So you've got a timber base um, with a khaki colored fabric um, and then obviously an outside decking area provided. I'm hoping these photos are going to be clear enough. Um, but this first photograph was taken from um, West Bay Road, so obviously the main road leading down into West Bay. The red arrow is indicating those existing glamping tents. Um, and then the yellow arrow is pointing to the application site. Um, these were taken relatively recently, um, but you can see some touring caravans um, where that ye um, yellow arrow is indicating. Um, but the next one is a bit of a kind of zoomed in photo from that same position. Um, and obviously the proposed glamping pictures will be viewed in relation to the other units of the holiday park. Um, and it is considered that the glamping, the existing glamping units are less visually intrusive than the whites of the, the touring caravans. Um, the glamping units would be sited on the site all year round, whereas the touring caravans currently um, can't be on the site between the 15th of January and the 28th of February. Uh, so this next photo is obviously from within the application, um, within West Bay Holiday Park, and it's showing those existing glamping pitches adjacent to the application site. And then this next photo is the, of the application site itself. And obviously you can see the touring caravans on there. Um, the proposal would result in a reduction. So there's 20 touring pitches, and that would go down to obviously 16 glamping pitches. Uh, this next photograph is taken from 40 foot way. Again, obviously the site is seen in the context um, of the wider park. Um, and the, again, the red arrow is pointing to the existing glamping units and the yellow um, indicating the application site. But again, it's obviously the white of the caravans that is more obvious from this viewpoint. Um, and then this next photo is taken from the other side of the harbour, um, just indicating the two again. Um, but the next one is a more zoomed in picture from that same location. Um, 
showing obviously the existing glamping units and then those, those touring caravans that are on the site. In terms of the key planning issues, um, principle of development, the application site is located outside of the DDB, but SUS2 does allow for tourism-related development. Um, it's considered in, in accordance with local plan policy Econ 7 through the reorganization of the site and Bridport Neighbourhood Plan Policy EE3. Um, in terms of residential amenity, the site is separated from those neighbouring resi um, residential dwellings and is kind of surrounded by the existing holiday park on those sides and it would obviously be replacing existing touring pitches. Um, in terms of heritage assets, it's not considered to result in any harm. Um, in terms of impact on the AOMB, the site would be viewed in the context of the existing park. It would replace um, existing touring caravans. And although the glamping pitches would be located on the site all year round, they are considered to be less visually intrusive than the white of the touring caravans. Um, in terms of flooding, the site is located. The site itself is located within flood zone one, um, but the access is in flood zones two and three. Um, as part of the recommendation, we are looking to reimpose the condition that although the glamping pitches can be on the site all year round, that they won't be occupied between 15th of Jan and the 28th of Feb. Um, and obviously, this isn't changing to a more vulnerable use, so it's not considered to result in a worsening in the current situation. Uh, highway safety, highways have raised no objections, and biodiversity, a biodiversity plan has been agreed. Uh, so in terms of the recommendation for this one, um, the recommendation is to grant um, subject to conditions, and two of those conditions have been um, amended on the update sheet. Um, so you've got the standard plans list and three years condition, um, that condition I mentioned about no occupy, so although the tents can be on the site all year round, they can't be occupied between the 15th of Jan and the 28th of February. Uh, it'll be 16 pitches only, um, and that they will be used for holiday purposes. Um, and that's also alongside the register of occupiers. A condition for the maximum dimensions of the tent to agree the canvas colour and to agree a lighting scheme, parking and turning, and then obviously the implementation of the biodiversity plan. And then on the update sheet, there is an amendment to the location plan for condition one, and just a slight amendment to the wording of condition five. But that's it, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. Can I confirm with the committee that you did um, receive the update sheet? Yes, thank you very much, thank you very much. Are there any questions of a technical nature for the case officer, please? Councillor Williams. Yeah. Um, will there st still be, you say there'll still be uh, some touring pictures on uh, uh, at the holiday site. How many will remain? I don't know the exact number. Um, But this plan shows that obviously there is still touring pitches adjacent to the, um, the application site, and there is further touring pitches on the adjacent field to that as well, but I must admit, I don't know the number. Yeah, thank you. That, that answers my question. And no further questions, Chairman. Thank you. No further questions. Okay, I now open uh, the debate to members. Are there anyone wishing to speak? Councillor okay. O'Leary. Chairman, as this is replacing existing um, units, um, I therefore see no valid planning reason to recommend refusal. Therefore, I would like to propose acceptance of the application. Thank you, Councillor O'Leary. And do we have a seconder? Do you, wish, do you wish to speak, Councillor Cocking? Right. 
Any other comments, questions? Okay. Uh, so I put my microphone on. If there's no more deliberation and members are content they've heard the entire presentation and debate, I will seek a proposal, which I've got, and take a show by help, um, take a vote by show of hands. All those in favour? Unanimous again. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. That concludes the that concludes the the um, applications, um, planning applications. We now go on to item six on the agenda. Urgent items. I've had no prior notification of any item of business which is considered to be urgent pursuant to section 100B4B of the Local Government Act 1972. Item seven on the agenda, exempt business. Uh, I've had no prior notification of any item viewed as likely to disclose exempt information within the meaning of paragraph three of the schedule 12A, of the Local Government Act 1972 as amended. Although there is uh, uh, an item which uh, the, we'd like to, to uh, um, share with the committee after we've actually closed the link. So I therefore close the meeting as far as the uh, 